And for more on just how much of a role the evangelical vote will play in 2024, we're welcoming back Niall Stanich, White House columnist at The Hill. Niall, thanks for being here. Good to be here, Natasha. So as you just heard in Robert Sherman's piece, evangelicals make up a bigger portion of the voting public now than in years past. But, you know, that support for Donald Trump has been dipping from 2016 to 2020. Will we see another drop like that if Trump gains the Republican nomination again? We could. It's certainly possible. I mean, I would just reiterate and maybe expand on the point that was made in Robert's report about the importance of evangelical and born-again voters. They do indeed play a pivotal role in actual general elections. But of course, in the Republican primary process, they're especially vital. The last time there was a competitive process like that in 2016, evangelicals were 64% of the people who went to the Iowa caucuses the first contest in that in that process. So they're absolutely vital. Can former President Trump hold on to them? We'll see. I mean, it is doubtful that he can hit the same levels as before, but uh, who knows? You know, former Vice President, meanwhile, uh, Mike Pence, putting a whole lot of his eggs in the evangelical basket, spending so many of, of, of his Sundays in churches across the country. Should he announce a run for the White House, could the evangelical vote be enough to push Pence past Ron DeSantis to that second spot behind Trump in the GOP race? It's an uphill climb for the former vice president, certainly looking at polls at the moment. Having said all of that, the former vice president has very deep roots in the evangelical movement in this country. He was initially seen very much be way before the vice presidency as a figure of what we used to term the religious right. That, that's a term that seems to have gone out of favor a little bit. But the point about it is that Pence has always drawn on that support. That has been his bedrock. And even in 2016, one of the reasons he was perceived to be chosen as then candidate Trump's running mate was to solidify the support that we're talking about, solidify the backing of social conservatives for that ticket. And I'm thinking about the voter that Robert spoke with in his story, saying that she voted for Joe Biden in 2020 because she was fed up with Trump's behavior. As voters like her are making up their minds leading into 2024, is there something that can pull them back to Trump's side, or is that vote really lost to him at this point? It's a fascinating question because I think we have seen evangelicals take basically one of two views of former President Trump. One is the view that was expressed by that voter who spoke to Robert. People who are themselves very conservative in their own lives like those conservative values and feel that his behaviour doesn't comport with that. Having said that, there are other evangelicals who argue that whatever about his personal life, the former president was able, for example, to confirm a lot of conservative judges, uh, so justices to the Supreme Court and also to lower courts. And the argument there is whatever about the rather uh, lurid personal life that um, Mr. Trump has been able to achieve those kinds of objectives. Okay. Niall Sandage, thanks so much for speaking with us tonight. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.